the the term you used here is functional movement and obviously everybody that listens to the podcast knows about functional medicine but that word functional is used a lot in different spaces so functional movement let's maybe it's a newer term for people that are listening right now what does functional movement mean for you so i think the word functional just in and of itself for me is really about from the inside out and something that's sustainable you know there's Yes, there are shortcuts, but they're not long-term. You know, I can do something crazy if I want to, people can go on a, a crazy diet and drop weight, but then what happens after they do that? So I think it's really about something sustainable and looking at things from the inside out. And for me, functional movement, you know, the way you move your body in that workout is only a small percentage of the day. Mm -hmm. And I like to think of it as my workout shouldn't start and stop when I push play on a video or I walk into a class and I leave, it really should be enhancing the way that I'm, you know, living my life daily. So it yeah. should be helping me when I go to pick up a heavy box that I don't throw my back out and I know how to, you know, use my glutes to do that. Or for all of our moms out there that are help strengthening their posture and their core so that when they're have their newborn, you know, they're not creating injuries. So I think it's, really just looking at yourself from the inside out and, you know, how to, you have one body and that right. is your, you know, vehicle to life and you have to take care of it. Got it. So the everyday things that we're doing around our life, picking things up, uh, the, the activities that whether you're working or you're, you're working yeah. from home, no matter what, it, it's, it's allowing us to live our lives in a, in a stronger way, in a more flexible way, in a more stabilized way. I think it's very much important. Two things that you mentioned here that earlier was the first one was the low back study, the clinical trial in the low back. So what what did that trial involve? What what do people do? And and tell us the the research around it. People will be geeking out about this. Yes. Yeah, so I can say a little bit right now. More is going to be published later in the year. Um, but we were at the University of Minnesota, and it was a two-year trial. You know, of taking patients with chronic lower back pain, and patients who were doing PVOLV, and patients that were doing um, another method. And the results were amazing. I mean, their back pain went away. They felt that they could perform activities better. They felt stronger. And, you know, sometimes you don't appreciate your body and the things that it can do until it's mm -hmm. taken away from you. Um, and so, especially me going through my own personal journeys with back pain, Lyme, all these different things, like this really um, is such a big part of my heart of making sure that we are creating programs for you know, different need states, especially one like this. And so for us to be able to come out and say, you know, that this is not smoke and mirrors, we really can do these things and have a dramatic impact on people's lives. You know, movement is so important, whether it's for five minutes, 10 minutes, 50 minutes a day. Um, and sometimes people think there's no options for them out, that, out there. And I'm so excited. You know, this is the first of many. We really believe in proving the efficacy of this method.